today, guys, I played one of the most intense games that I've ever played. This is round number one of my tournament. And guys, the end was absolutely insane. I'm gonna be telling you exactly what happened throughout the whole game. And you're also gonna be able to see live footage from the playing hole when I was sitting there. It's the first time ever that I do this. So I'm super excited to show you. Let's get right into the game. So I started the game with my favorite move, d4 and d5, c4, pawn takes e4, this is the queen's gambit accepted. Now I typically don't really, like I haven't really had that many opponents play this against me in over the board tournaments, but I know what to play. I typically go e3 just to attack the pawn on c4. And now you can go a little bit of different ways as black. You can either go e6, but you can also go e5, which is what my opponent did. Now, bear in mind that I didn't know who I was going to play, so there was like no preparation involved as the pairings were out 20 minutes before the game as it was round number one. So I wasn't really sure who I was going to play, so I hadn't really prepared a lot, and probably my opponent hadn't prepared a lot either. He was just playing the stuff that he probably typically plays. So the idea of e5 is that he's putting pressure on my pawn on d4, and and if I capture an e5, looks like a free pawn, well then he's going to capture an d1, and this pawn is actually going to be pretty weak, it's going to be some double pawns, and that's just not something that I want to have, because uh, I'm just going to have a really bad pawn structure, so I don't want to capture there, so instead I captured on c4, which is totally fine, and here I captured on d4, I captured back with the pawn, and then bishop b4 check. Now, this move, the idea of him is that he just wants to develop, he wants to say, hey, I want to castle soon, so I'm going to go check, get my bishop out, and then I'm going to go knight out, and then I'm just going to castle, because my king, I don't want to have it in the center. Now, in this position, the only move that I have to not lose the pawn, pretty much, I mean, is, is knight c3, this is by far the best move. Um, maybe bishop d2 I can play, but it's a lot more passive, there's going to be maybe... Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's queen takes d4, but you know, I don't want to do that. Knight c3 is good, just blocking the bishop, just blocking the check and getting a piece out myself too. So here he went knight f6 and in this position I thought quite a bit, I thought for like 15 minutes because I didn't really know what plan I wanted to have. I didn't know if I wanted to go knight f3 or if I was going to go knight e2. I even looked at this tactic, bishop takes f7 check, the idea being that if king takes f7, there is queen b3 check, and if the king moves, I can capture the bishop, but it doesn't work because there is knight d5 here. My knight is pinned, so I cannot capture, and now he's blocking the check with the knight, but at the same time, defending the bishop. So bishop takes f7 didn't work, so I quickly took that idea out of the way. And I was thinking knight f3, you know, it makes more sense to get the knight out towards the center, but I was actually pretty scared about this check, which I don't really know why I was scared of it, because after this and this and this, it's actually fine for me to give up a pawn, because we can see that the queen and the king, they're on the same file. I have so much activity that, you know, I'm, I'm just completely winning in this position, but I didn't really like get it during the game and I was also scared that if I went knight of three after castles and castles I was scared that this pin on g4 would become really strong so I ended up not going knight of three which objectively is the better move I went knight e2 in this position instead which is a little bit more passive but if bishop g4 there's f3 now and I'm also defending my knight on c3 so here castles I decided to get my king out of the way immediately I don't want to have my king in the center and now he went b6 and this is actually a mistake because he's weakening a lot his light squares and his bishop actually probably should go to g4 um, or should go to f5 um, it, at least it shouldn't go throughout this diagonal. This is not the right diagonal for the bishop. And the c7 pawn might also become a weakness at some point because of this. But we can see that he actually has some issues with development right now. And in this position, I went bishop g5, which is a, you know, good move. I'm developing my bishop. I'm pinning the knight. The knight cannot move anywhere. And I'm also threatening to go bishop takes, queen takes, and knight d5. So here he pretty much has to uh, go bishop b7 to avoid that. And in this position, this was a key position of the game because I thought for like 20 minutes here, like I thought for so long and I ended up not making the right move. Now, I didn't really understand the position, I believe. I think that I 
um, I, I didn't see the entirety of it. I only looked at certain moves and really try to make those moves work instead of actually saying, hey, maybe I should think outside the box and think about something else. Um, so in this position, the best move would be to go queen d3. The idea of queen d3 is to go bishop c2, sorry, bishop b3 and then bishop c2 to put pressure towards h7 because actually Black's king is very unsafe now that many pieces are on the queen side. I'm also allowing for my rooks to connect with each other, rook d1, rook c1. So this would have been the better move. If h6 in this position, sometimes there might even be bishop takes h6, pawn takes, and look at this, queen g6 check, the pawn cannot capture because of the pin. King has to move, queen takes h6, and after knight h7, I mean, this is really long, but there might be bishop d3, and you know, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of attack going on. So queen d3 would have been a fantastic move, but I was still thinking about the whole, you know, captures, captures, knight d5 idea that I had before. And I was really trying to make that work. So here I went, bishop takes f6, and this is a mistake. I knew that, you know, I shouldn't give away my bishop here, but I saw this idea of queen takes f6, and bishop d5 was like my idea. I, I wanted to exchange this bishop for this one because I thought that his bishop was really strong in this diagonal. And so I thought that it would be good for me to exchange. Now, the idea of this is that um, if he would have captured on d5, knight takes d5, I would have a really nice position. After queen d6, queen b3 is the best move. Um, and we can see that this bishop is actually now blocked by the queen, which is the plan. The bishop cannot retreat. And so it's really hard to see um, what, what he should do. Probably he has to go something like a5. But then my idea was to go a3. And it's you know, practically I'm going to have a lot of chances because um, maybe he has to go rook d8. But, you know, this bishop is pretty much trapped and it's pretty hard to see how exactly he should play. So I thought that this was just a really good position. Maybe here I might even be able to do something like this. So that was my idea. But instead, after bishop d5, uh, probably his best move would have been to go knight c6. But it's really hard to do a move like that because you're pinning your own knight. So he went c6, kicking away my bishop. Now, I want to stay in this same diagonal because I want to pin this pawn. I want to make sure that this pawn cannot push to c5 um, um, because, you know, c5, this would be the only move to actually, like, threaten my center. And I want to make sure he can't do that, which I am making sure with my bishop on f3 because, boom, the bishop on b7 would be hanging. So this, I thought, was a, you know, good position for me. Um, knight d7, and here was another point where I realized that I need to figure out what it is that I want to do. So I went a3 thinking that if he captures my knight, I'll be able to capture back and then I'll get the bishop pair. And I thought that I would be uh, slightly better then because there would be a lot of squares that would be weak and this bishop right now is pretty useless. But I didn't actually think that bishop e7 was as good of a, a move as it was. And this is what he played in the game. Now I didn't realize that the queen is not stuck. Like I thought here that this queen would have a lot of trouble after a knight e4, um, uh, but the queen actually is doing completely fine. The idea is that maybe I have a knight coming up to f4, I wanted to maybe bring up a knight to f5. So I decided that I wanna play with these two knights against the queen, but that was the wrong plan. In this position, my plan should be to go queen a4 and put pressure on this c6 pawn. Maybe bring in some rooks, uh, maybe to c1, and just put a lot of pressure on this pawn, taking advantage of the fact that the pawn is pinned. However, I went knight e4 here, kicking away the queen. The issue with this move though was that the knight is actually better on c3 because here I'm blocking this diagonal um, and I'm actually placing the queen on a better square which is h6. Now black's knight can maybe jump up to f6 and it's going to be easier for black to free his pieces. So queen h6 and here I was for a long time thinking that I wanted to go knight g3 but I realized after knight g3 that maybe black can simply go g6 and this knight is a joke. I mean, where is this knight going? The knight can literally not go anywhere. And if this knight ever gets kicked away, then my knight will have to go to c3 and this knight is just gonna be terrible. So I realized that this was just not a good position. I don't wanna place my knight to g3. So at that point, I realized that this was probably a mistake because this has been my plan to place a knight on f5. So I decided that I'm just gonna go b4 to at least stop my opponent from going c5. As if c5, I can capture and I'll force my opponent to capture back with the pawn and not a piece and then I can go d5. So rook d8, here 
I thought that maybe I want to exchange queens, but I, I realized that if I exchange queens, there's going to be queen takes, queen takes, and a5, and this bishop over here is actually really strong because if I have a capture, this pawn is going to be hanging. So my pawn structure, I realized, is actually not so good. I need to keep the queen. So I went queen b3 over here, uh, putting maybe at some point a little bit of pressure on f7, which let me tell you later on did become really good, and he went knight f6. I realized quickly that I didn't want to exchange these knights because I thought that my pawn on d4 might become a big weakness. And I also realized that I wanted to open up the diagonal for this bishop. So I went knight g3 over here, um, threatening knight f5, and then he went bishop f8. And I played rook a c1, putting pressure on the c6 pawn. Now it's under attack. Now, in this position, um, rook c8 was played, which uh, makes a lot of sense, defending the pawn. And here I had nine minutes left, nine. Do you know how little time it is? We are at move 18 right now and I had nine minutes left. I had thought for so long, my opponent had 24 minutes, but I had thought for so extremely long about all these moves because I had been really confused about what was going on in my position about what I should do with these two knights. Like these two knights were like dancing a tango and I didn't know who was dancing or what the dance even was. So I was very confused and I thought a lot of my time. So. At move 40, I was gonna get 30 extra minutes, but you know, I had 12 minutes to do, you know, in nine moves, which is crazy. So after rook ac8, I decided to go for the most forcing move that I could see, which was b5. Idea being that capture is not possible because there's bishop takes b7. So I'm immediately threatening this pawn, and I saw that probably one of his only moves is to go knight d5 and block me uh, from capturing the pawn. Now here, I saw this idea of rerouting this knight and try to get it over here because if captures captures then this rook is going to be fantastic and I also realized that you know what I can't put any extra pressure on the c6 pawn let me put pressure on this knight that you know uh, is dependent of this pawn so I went knight f5 threatening the queen he went queen f6 and then I went knight e3 and in this position even though the engine is saying that it's equal it's very easy to go wrong very 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 easy the only move he has to get an equal position is to go knight f4. This is the only move. Idea being that after captures, captures, he's giving up this pawn, but there's gonna be some bishop d6 and there's gonna be some threats going on towards my king. But he didn't see it and it's a hard move to see. He had 15 minutes over here left. It's not an easy move to see and he went for the second best move, knight e7. But this move actually gives me immediate advantage after knight g4 which I played, and this is actually a really strong move, um, and it's probably the only move that gives me advantage because I'm threatening the queen, and the queen cannot really go anywhere because if the queen goes to d6, then I'm gonna go knight e5, and I'm gonna be threatening both f7, but also this pawn on c6. I'm winning uh, material here. So the only move he has is to go queen e6, but this is not gonna be a fantastic endgame for me after the exchanges because this pawn is gonna be so weak and there's still this pin going on. So I played here knight e5, threatening immediately this pawn, but also stopping the king from coming up. Knight e5, and then he went knight e5 to block, but now I can just go b take c6. I have one pawn, there was nothing he could do about it. Um, and uh, he has to go bishop a6 to try to get some activity on this diagonal. And now I was thinking for a little while. I only had four minutes, so that little while was very short because I didn't have so much time left. So she's so much into the game. I wonder if she knows about the clock. Has she forgotten about the clock? But I played bishop g4, threatening this pawn. I think this is a good move. My idea was that if I did something random, I was scared that this pawn was gonna be hanging. So I wanted to go bishop g4 so that he would have to go rook d6 to keep this rook active and block this bishop. If rook e8, then this rook would not be in the active uh, file anymore. And I thought that this would be better for me than the previous position. So he went rook d6 and now I didn't have to be scared about this rook. And now I played rook f e1, which is perhaps a slight mistake, perhaps it would have been better to go rook d1 to defend this pawn, but actually how the game played out, this went really well. So rook e1, he made a mistake here. His best idea here is to go bishop uh, takes e2, rook takes e2, and just try to stop me from advancing. But it's hard to do, he was low on time, and he played bishop b5. Now bear in mind that in this position, I had less than a minute left. Like I had 58 seconds. Everyone 
was going, Anna, move, Anna, move. My mom thought I had fallen asleep. Like, this was intense. So, bishop b5, but I went for a good move, which is knight c3. This is a really good move, and the idea is simply that his only way of continuing the game is to go knight take c3. Any other move loses on this spot. He didn't do knight take c3. He captured on c6, but if knight takes c3, the idea is that after takes, takes, you know, uh, he has to go rook c7, but this is just going to be such a fantastic position for me. I can go rook b1, threaten the bishop, and then rook c1, and if captures, there's going to be rook c1, and we can see here that the bishop is pinned, and I'm going to be winning a full piece. So this is a fantastic position anyways, but over here, he actually went for bishop take c6. This move loses on this spot after knight takes d5. Here we can see that if bishop takes, the rook is hanging. If rook takes, there's bishop takes e6, and it's going to be a fork. I'm winning a rook. And if he goes for the move he did, e takes d5, there is bishop takes c8. I win a full rook, and here my opponent resigned. Move 30. So guys, I won the game today. I won game number one of Rilton. Super exciting. Um, it, obviously, he was a little bit lower rated, but I'm still super happy that I won. I'm playing one round every single day, so I will be playing round number two tomorrow. For the people that have missed it, I'm playing this tournament in Stockholm, Rilton, um, and I'm actually trying to win the tournament, Rilton Nilo. I did a full video about, you know, all the info about the tournament, but I'm actually trying to win the tournament because I was ranked 12th in the beginning, and... Uh, well, there's, there's chances for me to, to get top 10 and perhaps even a winning. So that will be the ultimate goal. But, you know, uh, we will see what happens. But I hope that you guys enjoyed the recap of day number one. I'll be back for day number two tomorrow. And just like, you know, today, you can also tune into my Twitch channel to watch all of this live. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't miss the game tomorrow.